this is my artist statement, um, live from my bedroom. That's one of my paintings in behind me. I forget what it's called. Um, it has a name, though. Um, so um, I decided to call this exhibit Abstract Impersonations, because I've, I, I, I think impersonation is sort of the core of our, re of our lived reality in all parts of our lives. So this, the artist statement goes like this. At the heart of abstraction, there is often impersonation. Not always a form of impersonation the artist might have intended, but impersonation nonetheless. And at the heart of impersonation lies representation. We can't get away from it as hard as we try, and it isn't really up to the artist to decide, is it? Isn't it the viewer, each and every one, who makes the final decision for themselves and no one else? When I laid nine canvases on the basement floor and dropped random, perhaps a little guided by the designating hand, and in designation we find conscious slash unconscious design, I had no clear sense of what would happen. I was using up old paint, getting a base coat for finished canvases. I had no tangible idea of how they would look, what they would be. And when I found the risk of Helen Frankenthaler's quotation, the quote risk, before I knew the quotation existed, I saw something initially found that I found quite ugly. But something about that so-called ugliness in some of my paintings appealed to me. Frankenthaler's quote goes like this. I would rather risk an ugly surprise than rely on things I know I can do. And Robert Motherwell, another um, painter, an abstract expressionist who was um, Frankenthaler's partner for a number of years, he said, one of the most striking of abstract art's appearances is her nakedness, her nakedness. <laughs> An art stripped bare, that's Robert Motherwell. And I said, in the midst of one of my um, superficial epiphanies about my own work, I say, my paintings are in drag. So given that triumvirate of intersective um, fine art pomposity, me, <laughs> Robert Motherwell, and Helen Frankenthaler, I, I go on to say in my artist statement that there was something about that so-called ugliness that Frankenthaler mentions in some of my paintings that appealed to me. So I, I, I did the base coats and I left the canvases alone in the half light of the sunroom until I could decide whether there was something vivid and perhaps beautiful in what I first saw as the quality of the grotesque. And I have always entertained a fascination with, what, with that fine line between the beautiful and the grotesque. And then I wiped and I brushed and I splattered, as I do, what have you, those paintings into a final form. Once they were, quote, completed, with the help of a viewer, I invited into the backyard to have a look and have a cocktail on a warm spring day, or when I had a FaceTime with white wine chat with Laurel, I found, for lack of a better word, beauty in those canvases. One viewer said that she saw saints in five of the pieces. She had been reading about saints, so she bought one. So I called three of those paintings the saints, and the one I liked the least I painted over, and it became the text painting in the show entitled Area Closed for Maintenance and Cleaning Due to Fecal Mishap. That is from a poem in my collection, Impersonating Flowers, 2007, published by Frontenac House, um, Calgary Press. Um, the poem is called Found Haiku, and I found that haiku 
on a sign at the West Edmonton Mall water park on the way back to the men's change room. Now, um, I, I, I remember I once admired a friend's abstract sculpture and I stared at it for too long and suddenly I found a Disney-esque rabbit in the middle of it. A friend once stared at an abstract painting that I once owned and saw Spongebob. Bob and the bunny were most certainly not what the artists intended, but they were there in that mass of abstraction or impersonation, representation, and a, and a viewer with a keen eye for rabbit ears. I mean, have you ever seen Bugs Bunny in drag? Oh, he is gorgeous. My favorite scene in the Basquiat biopic is when a buyer wants something to go with the furniture. I feel both repelled and attracted to the idea of art as home decor. The epigraph in my first collection of poetry, Invisible Foreground, reads, I am blighted by home decor. I do have a love-hate relationship with a lot of things, fine furniture in particular. Well, who doesn't, really? Now, apparently, Frankenthaler resisted some of the designations regarding menstrual imagery in her work. I have heard that Georgia O'Keeffe felt somewhat scandalized by all the attention to the flower as vagina that she felt didn't really relate to her work and her intention. Motherwell seems to have felt the need to give art a feminine program, pronoun and declare, quote, her nakedness from the quote I, I read um, earlier. In a relatively recent exhibit at the Art Gallery of Ontario, ago, Lee Krasner was described as being well known as Jackson Pollock's wife. How absurd. She was a brilliant abstract expressionist painter. Enough said. Now I give you in these paintings and Laurel's beautiful gallery, Atelier Ludmilla, I give you my impersonations and I name some of them through my poetry and prose. Please buy them and, and please feel free to name them and to rename them according to what you can see and what you can feel. Because of and in spite of the titles, they are all abstract impersonations. In a sense, they are all in drag. Thank you. Thank you very much. And for further information on my artist statement, you can see the footnotes about Frankenthaler and my text paintings at the website um, for Laurel's Gallery, Atelier Ludmilla. Thank you. Bye. Buy paintings, buy mine, buy everybody's, buy local artists' paintings whenever you can.